Every child with immigrant parents knows that one story about how some elder, whether it was their parents or some random uncle, came to America with an unreasonably small amount of money in their pocket. For example, my grandma always tells me about how she came to America with absolutely no money at all and lived with her sister until she could get on her feet. Or my dad who decides to repeat the story of how he came to America with just one suitcase in his hand every time he sees my closet overflowing. But enough about the immigrants themselves. Where does that leave us? And by us, I mean the children of immigrants. What stories are we going to tell our children? Maybe the struggles teachers have pronouncing my name. Or maybe how I skipped a grade in math when I was in elementary school because I'm brown. It might not be as interesting as crossing international borders with $10 in my pocket, but it is something. More importantly, am I going to tell them about the troubles I face integrating into a completely different culture than the one my parents brought me up in? What about the immigrant guilt I faced for every inconvenience I had seemed so insignificant in comparison to the hurdles my parents jumped in their days? Whatever stories we do decide to tell our children, they're just as valuable as the first generations. So let's start off with that math story then. Despite the common misconception, I don't have smart blood flowing through my veins just because I'm Asian. Rather, the internal drive to do better and get those straight A's, which we all know I did not end up getting, stems from the desire to make up for the efforts and struggles our parents had coming to this country. Immigrants come to this land of opportunities to live out the American dream, but their American dream is a little different from most others. Theirs is selfless in a way, to create a happy family and provide a stable income. Their, their objective is completely selfless, and they went through a lot of struggles to get here. Just like our parents, oftentimes children of immigrants feel similar pressures. Pursuing a STEM-related career can be seen as a safe route, while those who choose a different path may be condoned. Of course, we've seen how progressive our generation has become and how much more we've branched out. But for those of us who do choose that safe route, it's for reasons similar to our parents. For example, I play cello. Personally, I've never thought of having a career in music. Maybe because I'm not some insane cello prodigy, but also maybe because I always knew it was a risk I wasn't willing to take after all my parents had been through. I've learned a lot about my dad's childhood in Kenya, and it's shaped some of the views I have on my future. My father's family was evicted from Uganda, and my grandfather was almost killed during the partition of Africa. Thankfully, my grandfather and his family were able to pick up their life again in Kenya, and begin their new life and new freedoms, despite the treacherous transition. The core of their success, though, was their education and backgrounds. This allowed my grandfather to start a new business in Kenya. These stories have only grounded my belief in having a future and a career that supports my ideals as well as my aspirations. So I understand it's good to be idealistic and have a dream job. But there needs to be a realistic portion which will allow me to sustain myself, and maybe one day my family. From both my mother's and my father's side, my grandparents were able to resettle in different continents because of their quality education and background skills. So when you see immigrant children holding up their math competition trophies or science school medals, just know that they're not solely doing it for their resume, but rather to make their parents feel proud and accomplished to make sure their parents know that they're taking advantage of all the educational opportunities offered, to repay their parents in a way while also paving way for future generations. The educational stereotypes of immigrant children are not to be taken at face value, and it's essential to understand the background to some of the decisions we make. Now let's take a look at balancing two cultures. Indians living in America have coined the term ABCD, or American-born confused Desi, Desi being slang for the word Indian. As funny as it sounds, it holds just as much truth behind it. I personally consider myself an ABCD. Growing up in an Indian household was, to say the least, interesting. 
whether it was watching Shower Khan movies with my older sister or singing along to old Indian songs that were made before I was even born with my parents, I loved my heritage. I loved eavesdropping on the family gossip when all my aunts were gathered around speaking in Hindi and even joining in, but unfortunately in English. My dilemma of balancing two cultures has always been showcased through my inability to speak fluent Hindi or Punjabi the two languages I was brought up in. Despite my mom's constant efforts to teach me Hindi, I always pushed back. I was afraid that by embracing my culture at home a little more, I would lose the ability to blend in at school. With my name changing from Malika at home to Malika at school, I felt the balance tipping more and more toward the American side. Although I can still understand my parents when they're not speaking in English, Part of me wishes I had just taken that time and opportunity to learn Hindi from my mom. But the issue isn't as narrow as failing to fluently speak a language. It revolves more around that balance I was referring to. Trying to balance two completely different cultures is extremely difficult. And having an open-minded group of friends and colleagues certainly helps, but there's always going to be aspects from each culture that completely clash. Paralyzed by the fear of embracing my culture and identity, I faced a unique fear that my parents couldn't relate to, whether it was pronouncing my name, speaking the language, or even dressing the part. I struggled with my identity as not an Indian, nor an American, but rather an Indian American. Thankfully, I don't have this struggle anymore. Rather than having to choose a side, I instead embrace both, allowing me to shape the person I am and who I want to be. And lastly, let's take a look at immigrant guilt. The gap between first generation and second generation immigrants is largely overlooked and often not talked about, especially between children and their parents. There's an internal struggle between wanting to be grateful for everything our parents have done for us but simultaneously frustrated that they can't fully understand this other culture that's also a part of our life. Because of the apparent difference in lifestyle and upbringings, it makes it difficult to talk about some of the struggles we have as children of immigrants. For example, mental health is an issue that's not openly discussed or even acknowledged in other countries. So when a child of an immigrant tells their parents they're having mental health issues, we never know what reaction to expect. Discussing mental health is always a gamble because our parents simply don't understand what we have to complain about. The first question they'll always ask is, why do you feel that way? You have a house, food, clothing, opportunities I never did. They're not wrong in that aspect, but what they don't understand is that it's not a materialistic issue. Rather, it's a combination of the things I was talking about before. School, social life, balancing two cultures, there's a lot to juggle, so why can't we talk to our parents about it? Then we remember the obstacles they faced. They migrated to an entirely new country and created a family. They worked their way up the system. So in their eyes, hard work always equates to success. They're not concerned with anything except the end result because they know that where there's hard work, there's going to be success. Weighing their struggles with ours, it seems childish and selfish to complain. But this is like comparing infinities. Is one infinity really bigger than another? Is one struggle really worse than another? The American part of us wants to tell our parents to value the path we took rather than the result, and the cost we take on that path. But the immigrant part of us is what keeps all these inconveniences bottled up. The reason why this inability to communicate occurs can be summed up in one simple word, legacy. Continuing our parents' legacy is the goal we all have set. So when we discuss things like mental health, we think it's going to hinder our ability to continue that legacy. This is also why it's hard for children of immigrants to come out to their parents or tell their parents they want to pursue a different career path than one that's commonly accepted. Our parents might not understand that some of these things are out of our control and we still want to continue that legacy, we just might need some help getting there. And it's not that our parents want us to suffer, they just have differing views on some of the issues we face. Our parents are much more resilient than we are, there's no doubt. 
These are people that left their roots and came to America with perhaps poverty and inability to speak English and difficulty fitting into a new culture. This simply adds another layer of inability to understand the struggles we face. But it's always better to talk to our parents about it since at the end of the day, they do want what's best for us. So we as children of immigrants do face a lot of struggles, but we are also just as well equipped to deal with them. Thanks to the values our parents have instilled in us, we can grow and prosper from each of our struggles and experiences and allow them to shape the person we are and who we want to become. The immigrant part of us is a unique identity, setting us apart from others in this country. It allows us to experience some of the same traditions our parents had growing up. It also constantly it makes us constantly think about the long term and the cycle of opportunities. In other words, how our grandparents set up opportunities for our parents, who set up opportunities for us, so now we can set up opportunities for future generations. Ultimately, we are extremely grateful for everything our parents have done for us. And despite not living off $10 in a foreign country or coming to America with just one suitcase, I'm still excited to share the stories with my children as a second generation immigrant. Thank you.